Thank you. Thank you. Sorry for this delay. And thank you, Team Hormone India, for this opportunity to talk on an important topic that is the rickets. Uh, you know, the rickets is a term came from uh, meaning that there is a rickon or to twist. And another term, which is, uh, say, comparative adult, is called osteomalacia. So, long term, long way, this term was described, and first time is described in the dogs, actually, in the reptiles. And uh, we have recently listened a wonderful talk from Dr. Kalinka, uh, ma'am. And uh, the next one is, is anomaly to differentiate from osteoporosis in osteomalacia. So remember this one picture that. So your voice is not coming. Okay. Not coming? Yeah, it's. it's Straight, it's audible, but not clearly. Um, I think the mic, there's some problem. You need to be closer to the mic, sir. Okay, now it was coming before, sir. Uh, now it's not. Hello. It's like poorly audible, sir. Uh, it was coming initially for a uh, few minutes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now it's okay. Let me continue. I think. Uh, Slides are, at least slides are visible now. Yeah, yes, yeah. Slides are visible, sir. You can be a little louder, so probably it will come. So, yes, sir, thank you. Specific bone disorder of the growing skeleton, and that mainly affects the children and adolescents before their epiphyseal fusion. So, defect and delayed mineralization of growth plates in the bones, which ultimately leads to the subnormal linear growth and the characteristic skeletal deformities. The rickets is mainly caused by nutritional uh, uh, deficiency, especially in our country. And there are many other disorders those can cause the rickets. So what is the pathogenesis of the nutritional rickets? So we all know that these two important factors, those are playing a role in the uh, rickets. That is one is vitamin D deficiency and another is dietary calcium deficiency. So many people does not recognize the dietary calcium deficiency per se can cause the uh, rickets of the osteomalacia, but it is very well documented. So we all know that vitamin D deficiency uh, convert in the skin under the uh, UV light in the, uh, uh, in the UV light range of 290 nanometer to 310 nanometer, and that convert into the uh, 25 hydroxylation, and subsequently there is one alpha hydroxylation takes place in the kidney, and the 25 takes place in the liver. And then subsequently, if there is a vitamin D deficiency there, because of the vitamin D deficiency, there is inadequate intestinal calcium absorption. And because of this inadequate intestinal calcium absorption, there is decrease in the serum calcium level. And that low serum calcium level with the low vitamin D leads to the serum rise in the serum PTH, and which will ultimately lead to the low serum phosphate. And we all know that serum phosphate plays a very major role in the chondrocyte apoptosis. So there is chondrocyte apoptosis does not take place. In that case, there is delayed and chondral uh, calcification, and that actually results in the rickets and the osteomalacia. Similar thing can happen with the inadequate dietary calcium, and that can cause, or there may be some reason because of the decreased serum 125 dihydroxy vitamin D that can also result in rickets and osteomalacia. So the rickets and osteomalacia can be caused by dietary calcium deficiency or vitamin D deficiency or some of the genetic causes, those are responsible for the conversion of the vitamin D to the active vitamin D. So here is the growth plate of the rickets in the patient, a normal growth plate and which has uh, actually five zones, that is a called germinal zone and then subsequently there is proliferative zone, then hyper uh, hypertrophic zone and finally the uh, zone of calcification and finally the zone of ossification. So you can see the broad plate here in the red, and that will ultimately looks like that uh, uh, in a normal individual. So what we need for mineralization, we for mineralization we need four things. That is one is calcium, another is phosphorus, and third is alkaline phosphatase, vitamin D, and PTH. But sometimes, uh, but because of the, some abnormality in the collagen, that can sometimes present as a uh, rickets of the osteomalacia, though it is a not very common. But that can sometimes cause, and the example is fibrogenesis imperfecta osseum, or that is called the FIO. 
and the what infrastructure we need in addition the raw material for the rickets or for the bone mineralization the infrastructure required is the osteoblast cells those are bone forming cells osteoclast cells those are bone resorbing cells and the osteocyte indeed that will take care or we control the osteoblast and osteoclast and finally the collagen these are four uh, important component of the uh, mineralization are there now coming to the spectrum of the cases of the etiology of the uh, rickets of the osteomalacia so in broadly we can divide into four group one is the calcipenic rickets that is because of vitamin d deficiency or the nutritional rickets or that is because of vitamin d uh, d vitamin d receptor 1 uh, that is one alpha hydroxy deficiency or vitamin d dependent rickets type 2 that is because of the uh, what you call uh, vitamin d resistant rickets the phosphopenic rickets that may be sporadic that may be familial and the tumor in this osteomalacia though it is not very common in the young age then other category is the renal tubular acidosis it may be proximal it may be distal or the mix and then the rare causes of the rickets or osteomalacia that comes in the hypophosphatasia as i mentioned the fibrogenesis imperfecta osseum but the main problem is in the collagen and then is another example of this Rickets in the other osteomalacia that is called axial osteomalacia. Though I am not covering in the detail osteomalacia, I am just talking about the rickets only. So these are the symptoms of the rickets. The skeletal manifestations, uh, well-known skeletal manifestations, rickets are skeletal deformities. These deformities depends on the at what age the patient is develop the symptoms. Like when the patient is started crawling, meaning by that initial features of deformity in the upper limb. and the another feature is bone pain and the rickets are an important cause of short stature sometimes patient with the rickets can have the fractures and some of the dental abnormalities those are much more common in the hypophosphatic osteomalacia as compared to the uh, uh, vitamin d deficiency rickets and these are the various extra skeletal manifestations those are in form of hypotonia uh, proximal muscle weakness that can lead to the abdominal muscle weakness and present in form of the protuberant abdomen the abnormal gait and then sometimes the calcium deficiency is very severe patient can have the titania or the seizure or the reversible cardiomyopathy so these are the various skeletal manifestation and extra skeletal manifestation of the rickets osteomalacia uh these are the various signs and that is again depends on the uh, that is present overall body that may be the skull there can be a craniotabi central bossing delayed closure of the anterior or posterior fontanelle the dentition that the delayed eruption of the teeth dental enamel hypoplasia then extremities well known that is probably the most common uh, signs that is genu valgum or the genu varum and some of the severe patient they can have the wind swept deformity in one lower limb there is genu valgum and other there is genu varum uh, in the thorax you can look for the rickety rosary or the harrison sulcus Spine, the patient can have kyphosis, scoliosis, or the lumbar lordosis, and the neuromuscular. As I mentioned, patient can have pot belly in form of hypotonia or the delayed motor milestone, and they can have the symptoms of the hypocalcemia in form of positive vostek and the toje signs. So the rickets patient actually having the lot of symptoms and signs that depend on the severity and the etiology, and that will sometimes help to differentiate what is the etiology of the rickets. now come to the approach to the rickets i think this slide is little busy but uh, you can differentiate or the first investigation can be alkaline phosphatase if the alkaline phosphatase is low then the diagnosis is the hypophosphatasia which is very rare but uh, it is important to look for this disease because the treatment is totally different for this condition as compared to others and then you can see the calcipenic rickets or the phosphopenic rickets in the calcipenic rickets the vitamin d may be low or the 25 hydroxy vitamin d is low or the 25 dihydroxy or 25 hydroxy vitamin d is normal if it is low then there is a possibility of vitamin d deficiency or vitamin d dependent rickets type 1b or if the 25 hydroxy vitamin d is normal still patient there in features of rickets of the low calcium the low phosphate then we have to look for the 125 dihydroxy vitamin d If the dihydroxy 125 vitamin D is low, active vitamin D is low, then there is a possibility of uh, vi uh, vitamin D dependent rickets type 1A. If it is normal or high, in this case, there is a possibility of calcium deficiency. 
or if it is high energy diagnosis vitamin d dependent rickets type 2 or we call it is a resistant rickets also and if the calcium force profile is normal that is very very important many times and these are the actually falls in the category of the skeletal dysplasias if the phosphorylated rickets there most important feature is low phosphate but always it should be analyzed in presence of the normal vitamin d and in that case you can look for the tmp gfr if the tmp gfr is low then there is you have to look for the amino acid urea or the you can call the uh, bicarbonate level or during the glucose estimation so if it is these are high then there is a possibility of renal tubular acidosis if these are normal then we have to go for either it is vitamin d dependent rickets type 2 or we have to look for the fgf23 level uh, fgf23 level is high then it is the actually uh, actually uh, excellent while it is low and then there is a possibility of the hhr that is hereditary uh, hypoxemia indicates the hypercalcemia and if it is high phosphate then there is uh, various low uh, tmp gfr is high then that we have to look for the dietary phosphate deficiency which is actually very rare in the clinical setting so this is the approach to rickets but you can plan this approach to rickets in form of the looking the low phosphate also now the recently people are talking the phosphate is the major culprit for causing the uh, rickets whether it is vitamin d deficiency or whether it is a primary phosphate deficiency so this is the typical radiological findings and uh, nicely seen in this uh, radiograph that it is cupping that is spraying and the spraying is there and the growth plate is enlarged now i'll take you a few interesting cases quickly uh, a 19 year old boy who presented with lower limb uh, pain and the deformity so you can observe here then difficulty in walking from last two years the past history at eight years he developed the jaundice at 14 years he had a bilateral knee pain and at 17 years he had a facility fracture of the uh, right femur you can see here and at 18 years bilateral cataract and underwent the cataract surgery so this is basic history of the patient uh, he was a uh, short stature and he also had a scoliosis and the various other findings uh, suggestive of rickets were present in this uh, 17 year old boy Coming to the investigations, so you can see that creatinine was elevated, though ALT and AST were normal, phosphate was low, uh, vitamin D was normal, alkaline phosphate is for this age, it is uh, border mildly elevated, and the during pH was 7, and the TMP GFR was very low, and the BBD shows the normal NN gap metabolic acidosis, and urine analysis shows the uh, presence of the glucose in the urine or the sugar in the urine. So that is now. I am sure the diagnosis is almost clear that we are treating the patient who is having hypophosphatemia, who is having the uh, creatinine, elevated creatinine and the low TMP GFR. So it is further investigated and found to have the uh, coarsened liver ecotexture and the cellular, serum syndroplasmin level was normal of course and the liver biopsy is suggested to chronic hepatitis and this patient underwent the uh, copper content estimation and it was high in this patient and so the diagnosis made was the Wilson disease but the Wilson disease leads to the uh, what you call type 1 or the uh, type 2 or the uh, type 1 uh, type 2 RTA that is having the features of the glycosuria and proteinuria so this patient is now coming to the treatment treatment is for the primary treatment for the disease that is now the zinc is the treatment for that or you have to supplement initial time so that the uh, mineralization can take place. Another patient, this is the 12 year old boy and you can see severe deformities are there, the upper limb, chest, as well as the lower limb. And here is the uh, biochemical profiles, you can see the calcium was normal, phosphate was low, alkaline phosphate is sky high and the PTH was suppressed that is 2.5 picogram per ml. And the KLC trial level was 36 picogram per ml. That was the inappropriately low. The fibroblast growth factor FGF23 was normal, and urinary calcium was very high. So you can see that patient is having two important features. One is low phosphate, low TNP GFR, and the high urinary calcium. So the diagnosis is the HHRH. So here is the X-ray of the patient. There is gross deformity. All the bones are uh, severely deformed as well as any multiple factors also. 
So this patient actually having the diagnosis of the HHRS and it was a mutation proven by the patient was homozygous while the both parents were having the heterozygous disease. And obviously, treatment uh, here is just phosphate supplementation, not the active vitamin D is not required in these patients. Now, coming to another case, the 16-year-old boy, uh, past history of fragility fracture in right leg two months back, and he was the, under the plaster cast for the immobilization, and somehow fracture did not heal. And uh, uh, he also had a 3 to 4 centimeter right sided neck swelling. He had right leg shortened and internally rotated. He has kyphosis, factor scarinatum, rickety rosary, Harrison sulcus, and wrist and ankle work. Uh, ankle widening was there. So here is the picture of the patient, and you can see that large mass is there in this uh, neck. So initially, this patient was thought to have the, uh, some thyroid malignancy actually, and he admitted, but uh, his profile was like this: calcium was 15.6 milligram per deciliter. PTH was very high and vitamin D deficiency was also there, but he had a bilateral visual stone disease and the pancreatic calcification as well. So here is the picture and the patient had a parathyroid adenoma successfully operated. So PHPT presenting as uh, rickets osteomalacia. Coming to the another case uh, uh, that is a uh, similar patient with the primary hyperpara presenting with the OFC and the features of the rickets and osteomalacia with the treatment such as uh, shown a very good improvement after the successful parathyroidectomy. Another patient, a uh, seven year old boy, he presented no knee uh, at the one and five years of the age and the poor height gain since one year of age and diagnosed the rickets three years age but no response to calcium and vitamin D. He had also had a episode of GTCH, GTCS, sorry, and started on the phenytoin, which he received for almost six months. So after stopping, uh, here is a clinical profile of the patient, bilateral genuvalgum, short, short, as well as wrist winding, and having other features of the uh, rickets osteomalacia. Here is the biochemical profile. So patient with low calcium, alkaline phosphate was high, and even after off phenytoin, it was like that. The PTH was high, uh, though vitamin D level was normal in this patient. So you can see low calcium and the normal vitamin D with the uh, high PTH. So here is the extra of this patient. You can see these subtle signs of the uh, rickets are there in the uh, uh, knee, uh, the knee joint, and there's uh, more fluorid sign the signs of the rickets in the wrist area. So the, in this patient, patient with features of rickets and hypocalcemia, normal 25 hydroxy vitamin D, also inappropriately normal 125 dihydroxy vitamin D. So the diagnosis considered the vitamin D dependent rickets 1A. The patient was treated with the 125 active uh, vitamin D and showed a very nice improvement. Also is subjected for the clinical exome sequencing and that shows the TRPB4 heterozygous mutation which was actually a uh, variant of uncertain significance. So we are still not sure that it is really contributing or something else is there, but the clinical diagnosis was the uh, VDDR1A because of the uh, patient responded very well to the 125 diagnosis vitamin D. Uh, last patient, the five-year-old boy, poor height and weight gain, and uh, he had features of the rickets and the history of frequent falls for the last two years. And he's significantly short and the intramalleolar distance was high, having other features of rickets and osteomalacia in form of genu valgum, rickety rosary, port belly, kyphoscoliosis. And here is the investigation. So you can see the, uh, most of the investigations are normal, including the calcium, phosphate, magnesium, and the PTH was 33, vitamin D was 43, and the thyroid profile was normal. And you can see the VBG is also normal, but the TMP GFR was the on the lower side. Uh, sorry, the TMP GFR is also within the normal limit that is in the minimal. So it is the normal. So here is the picture of the patient skeletal survey. Uh, you can see this uh, epiphysis is small and there is platy spondyle is there. Uh, so in this particular patient, we have seen the complete metabolic bone profile was normal. And having the features suggested the rickets 
in form of the uh, delayed bonus, in form of the small epiphysis, and the cupping and fraying are there. A similar finding in the knee joint also. So the diagnosis actually is condylo epimetaphyseal dysplasia. So the message I want to give here is that if the calcium profile or the metabolic pole profile is absolutely normal, we should look for the some bone dysplasias. So rickets mimic, and the treatment is here is that uh, just calcium and vitamin D routine supplementation, and now recently growth hormone therapy is approved for the treatment of this. So I uh, end my talk by saying here that rickets is a disorder of growing skeleton characterized by impaired mineralization growth plate and this varied manifestations are there, multiple causes and etiologies are there, but still in our country, nutrient rickets is most common and genetic causes to be considered and always keep in mind about the bone dysplasia. Thank you very much for your patience hearing.